one of Ghana's most treasured pieces of nature lies in Ada, Songo, the country's second biggest lagoon. Eight mangroves is an eerie place, home to some of the most prized species found only in a place as serene as this. This is the richest salt mine in West Africa, home to more than half of all of Ghana's salt deposits. The salt here has been mined communally by villagers who live around it for centuries. Now, the government of Ghana has handed it all to one company, Electrochem, owned by Daniel Macaulay, also known as Macdan, for commercial salt mining. Money is coming, and uh, we are happy. But the process of handing out this lagoon to Electrochem has set a division between the people of Ada, with people who support it. The coming of Electrochem will do us more good than what some of our people are suspecting or even thinking. And those who say this will take away livelihoods and make them even poorer. It will be a, a great fight among we, the Adans and the, uh, uh, the government. This place is rich. The value of Songo's salt runs into millions of dollars. But the people who live around it are some of the country's poorest. In this film for Joy News, I will be tracking the Songo Lagoon's long history the wealth it holds and why the takeover by Electrochem is creating so much tension here between the people of Ada, government and the investor. You see, to understand the Ada Songo story better, you need to go back in time to May 1985. A trigger had been pulled and a live bullet had been shot. The original target was missed, but the bullet found other victims. It tore through the arm of a lady, Ama Kwenim, then grazed the stomach of Christiana Bio, a pregnant woman. There was a loud scream. Ow! I fear me too. The bullet finally penetrated the chest of another young pregnant woman. She fell dead with blood gushing from her body. Her name was Margaret Kuonu, known to her people as Maggie. The entire village was thrown into confusion and panic. There was wailing as our people swore to their ancestors. There was running in all directions for safety, but nowhere was safe. This is a reenactment from Who Killed Maggie? A book written by salt miners in Ada to recount one of the deadliest days in the history of this area. These communal clashes between the police and the people had ended up in the shooting and killing of an unarmed pregnant woman, Margaret Kuonu, and her unborn baby. This followed years of tension and attacks between Vacuum Salt, a company that had been handed the Songo Lagoon for commercial salt mining under circumstances that residents here described as shady without their consent. Ago! 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 My name is Numo Amante Apedo Ayono. Libiwono, stroke salt priest of Adan traditional area. My role is to look 
after the songo. The songo is a sacred place tied to the history of the Yada people. The four tribal clans that first settled here discovered it and are supposed to own it together. They have mined its salt for centuries using bare hands and basic traditional technology. This lagoon is a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve, which amongst other things calls for an integrated approach to biodiversity, cultural diversity, sustainable development and participatory inclusion of communities whose lives depend on it. With over 40,000 acres of the land area here, now a concession of electrochem, the people here no longer have the free access they've always had to mine salt. This man is their spiritual leader. When the decision was being taken to give out the songo, he claims he wasn't told. And like him, many of the people here that I've spoken with say, they have very little or no knowledge about the processes that has led everyone to this point. There are more than 40 villages around this lagoon, all of them with a population of over 70,000, are largely salt miners. The property is known for the, those who signed the agreement. Yes, and secondly, nobody will overpass me and go and do something about the Songo Lagoon without my knowledge. Daniel Macaulay is a man of many parts and one of Ghana's richest men, a consummate businessman with interest from shipping to aviation. Despite claims by traditional leaders like the Libiwono, he told us he had met all the people concerned with this lagoon. We have four Oko clan in Adam. I visited Lomobia, no, no, Dangbebia first. I went to Lomobia. I met the Wetu, the, the, the head, and the Asafua chairman. I met them. One, 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 one. I finished with the four of them. And the Paramount was the last place I went. So I went to the Paramount When I meet you, I said, look, I want to develop the some of sorts. Will you allow me? Surprisingly, all of them said yes. Nobody, none of them said no. Because it has been an impossibility in Ada. Anybody here, anybody who comes here run away. Since 1970. Anybody that step here, run away. So I asked the four of plan that if you want me to develop a song of the four of the clan plus the paramounts, you have to sit and sign one paper for me. It was the queen mother who led that. So they, that was a difficult part of the whole thing. It was very difficult for the four. They have never sat before in a round table like this in Adam, the four of the clan. But because of me, they sat. The electrochem leases, the business plan, everything that I read, and I spent a lot of time looking at the material. It's extremely inequitable. The qualifications of the company are questionable. And the role of the local chiefs is also an issue where so-called leadership and participation really is of a questionable character. Dr. Yao Graham has been associated with the Songo for more than three decades. In the mid-80s, he was part of a government committee which dealt with the conflicts around the running of the salt mines. Today, he leads the Third World Network, a think tank that advocates for responsible mining that benefits host communities. It is quite unprecedented that the Songo Lagoon, the Songo Basin with this uh, mineral producing potential, because this is the single biggest site for salt production in the whole of West Africa, never mind Ghana, to, hand, to give a monopoly of the whole basin to one company 
is quite extraordinary. Secondly, to give to a company with no proven history of salt mining is even more worrying. Then thirdly, to give it to a company on terms which are completely insensitive to the history of previous efforts to find a policy framework which was equitable and allowed the local people a role in the mining of salt because salt has been part of the livelihood strategies of the Adam people for generations. Then, of course, there are questions about the process by which this decision was taken. So, from any number of angles, uh, there, are, there are questions. And of course, it will be justified by, and it is being justified by officials as in the national development interest. But we can ask questions whether a lagoon where even when companies with experience were active, it was being used by several companies. It is possible for a company with no experience to take over the whole lagoon. This is the Kase market. It's the economic powerhouse in the Adar area. Nearly all the salt mined in the Songo is sold from this market. Salt traders from all over Ghana buy from this market. The women who have built their businesses around the salt trade have concerns over the takeover. Change, though is the constant thing in life, change is very difficult. And some people find it very difficult to accept change. Ernest Kublenu leads a group of young people from Ada fronting for the project to come on. They've recently been on demonstrations to drive their message home. Some of us really believe that the, the coming of Electrochem will do us more good than what some of our people are suspecting or even thinking. For the past 30, 35 years, this song has seen a lot of uh, interim management committees from government. And you want to ask yourself, what has that brought to the good people of Adan? Nothing. And, that, and, and, and Songo is dying. And some life needs to be brought back to Songo. There are vibrant youth in Adan who can work currently at these Galamse sites, dying by the day, just because they want to feed themselves and their families. Now, should this work stand, we are told we are, they are going to employ between 2,000 and 5,000 youth in the, in, in the first, just the first phase. Because what we know is that the a second phase is going to have a, the Clo Akaline company. So it means it is not just about the salt. The salt is going to birth other industries. And when you put all that uh, together, employment alone is one. We have other corporate social uh, responsibilities that we are going to enjoy. And talking about some, uh, uh, when you read the chiefs, what they agreed on with the investor, we have people who today go, go to schools and end at primary schools. Some end at JHA, some end at uh, SS, uh, SHA, because they don't have that uh, support. There are many things about this takeover that reminds the people here of the violence of previous takeovers. In many parts around the Songo, there's fear and anxiety. In February 2021, barely a month after Electrochem had started work here, there was gunshot exchanges between three communities that had strongly resisted development of the concession and workers of the company. Uniformed and plain-shirted men were with the workers of Electrochem on their way to the company's site when a gun battle broke out. 19 people were shot, including Bertha Agbluvi, who is only 14 years old. <laughs> Inaka bullets by Nayokun. 
mi wa ka wa bi ka gbogbo ke ko le ni wo ye inu ina ni nge ma da gbe ko fo ko ni wo inu ina kan ni ko mi wo police uniform na ni ko mi o tade la ke no ka ta nge se la pe a a ispe se li ne ne ni nge fu ina kan ni nge fu ma ni wa nge bi ke mi ni ba lo ke le wa ma mi je pe le ke wa ko ya po se wa hin bi o ke ke le hu a ba gbe nge ye yi ya pia mna keto ko ene ichese no ku pe ba linge ludu ofia ko mle ni ma ba na mi ko ji bule to ba mu eye mi eye mi wa wele yin linge mo su community members have accused electrochem of influencing the police and using thugs against them i've come to the police commander to find some answers and you are saying that the electrochem side did not have any guns yes, with them. Yes. Um, and yet people sustained gunshot wounds. So who would have fired these shots? That is where the complainants or the victims should be able to assist us. Did the police contingent among that team see anything? Because they were there. What they saw was the people coming out from the bushes to come and attack the workers. And that is why they also pounced on them and got the 10 people arrested. The police pounced on the people who Yes, were. and got them arrested because it was together with some motorbikes. It was something they were doing. So our intelligence was that, uh, that we had was that the people go to hide in the bushes when they see the workers coming. It is so fortunate that they were with police. Other than that, the same incident, that previous incident that happened would have repeated itself. Uh -huh. So since they then arrested the people who were intended to attack the um, electrochem staff, they would have known or seen, or at least have an idea, who would have fired the gunshots. How would they know? This is the Adar Traditional Council. It was here that the agreement was made over the future of the lagoon by chiefs representing the divisions under this traditional area. I've come here to get some answers. Because of this, this magnet's work, they came and attacked me in my house. More than 100 people that they are coming to kill me. Nene Kole the fourth is one of them. We went to the government and asked, begging the government, because we know that the Songo Lagoon is spoiling. About say two or three years coming, the Songo, the, the Songo will not be, be, be coming out of the lagoon again. For me, I'm standing here and say that the way should, should come today, tomorrow, year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, the work is coming to stay. Even if some, even if some people disagree with the work, the, will come uh, on because it's for the government. Government gives the work to Magdan. I didn't give, get, give the work to Magdan, so I'm not afraid of it. If they come and cut my head, I know that whatever it will comes, the work is going on. It will go on. It is going on. Those who have looted the lagoon. They ran away and are hiding in Accra. They are the people causing this mess now. The government even is not thinking of us here. The government is not thinking of us now to implement the master plan. So if any investor that comes who will create job for our children is the one we support. There's been many other takeovers, many promises of jobs, of development in Ada with past takeovers. What is the guarantee this one will be different? The guarantee is there for us because he's one of our own and we spoke to, we spoke to him. We discussed a lot of issues with him before this project take off. So we know that he will do it because he has started community plans. He wants to develop an area for the indigenous around the Songo Lagoon for them to benefit from the soil that at Chiakpo, the one they do it themselves. He wants to construct the community plans for them for them to benefit because if he starts his project, he won't allow you to enter the main lagoon again. Every community here, there has been a community engagement with the people and their chief sitting there. Not a single village we haven't gone like two, three times. So the community, I can tell you on authority now, that if you move in there and you talk to the people on the street, 98% support this project. 
The entire web of people around the Songo is messy. There's deep mistrust between chiefs in this area. Many of the communities here have been held back by years of chieftaincy conflict that have disrupted the traditional form of community ownership and running of the lagoon that existed many years in the past. The situation has given room for the springing of mafia groups and shady businessmen and women who are exploiting the lagoon to their advantage to the anger of many people here. Over the last few years, there's a new form of galamsi in the Songo Lagoon known as the uh, uh, Achiangpo issue. Even the, uh, the Achiangpo, we have two types. We have some Achiangpo that are in the heart of the Songo. And that is causing a lot of distraction to the Songo Lagoon. Because uh, something that used to be there for everybody, then a few group of people decide to enter and partition it among themselves. So you don't have that right to go in any longer. Because anywhere you stay belongs to somebody. So what you are supposed to go and mine, which is yours that you can sell and make life out of it, you are not coming to mine for your fellow uh, Adaman, who decide how much he will pay you. Joy News has seen records to show that even the Libiwono, who is supposed to be the spiritual owner of the lagoon, a highly respected figure who must stay above reproach, has leased part of this lagoon out to salt miners. This messy situation has created room for controversial takeovers like what is happening with Electrochem now. Even if, as it appears now, many of the people here were against it because it wasn't in their interest. We would not agree. And it cannot be possible. Go to Mutual Robin and pay a metal of 500,000. So, you're going to have a juggle within three years. I'll come back here. If I find the 400, 300 per week or two weeks' time. In response to some of the concerns raised by community members, David Cameron, general manager for Electrochem, told us they are already building community plans to allow those whose land would be taken for this project to continue mining. So they, Electrochem, would now buy from them. There's two solutions. One is to, to follow this, the, the DESPA um, uh, process, which means they, they join us and they become our miners. So they go from being, if you like, self-employed, which they're not really because cartels and other groups control them as well. So it's not as simple as that. Um, so that's one aspect. The other aspect is that we're building community pans. We've already built community pans for the Abakpi people, which is at the very west-hand end of, of the concession. And um, the idea is that we'll provide them with brine, top quality brine. They'll do the, the mining and we'll buy the, the salt back from them so they can carry on uh, doing what they're doing. The factory claims to be producing more than three times what the old managers were producing and now employs about a thousand people, more than three times the number of people who used to work here previously. At its peak capacity, the company says it would employ 5,000 people at least. But many of the people around the Songong say the artisanal mining already engages over 20,000 people. Ninde, waba naka, atiakpo, e wawo. Roba, ne wangme, e wawo. E akan four days biya o majengu. Four days biya o majengu. This sack, yeah. As at now, it's 50 Ghana. As at now, we sell 50 Ghana. People come from Kasua, Kufoidra, Kumase, I mean, all over. People come from Niger. I have customers at Niger, Wa, Tamale. They all come down here to come and buy salt. What Electrochem is doing here isn't new. Many attempts have been made in the past to create a working commercial salt production factory here. In 1989, four years after the violence that took Maggie's life, the PNDC government then, with help from the Cuban government, put together a comprehensive plan that was meant to end the years of conflict over the Songo. The plan, which was never implemented, balanced sustainability large-scale, small-scale, 
an artisanal sword mining interest. In that plan, there was a place for everyone. There's a, a, a model of mineral exploitation from colonial times, which our governments are attached to. So when we say it's in the national interest to, ex up to produce more salt, it is true. Actually, all of us want the Songo salt potential to be optimized. Produce how many tons? As many tons as is possible to produce. But how do we produce it? How is it done in a way which ensures that the history of conflict, which has marred mineral production generally around the country, and particularly in Songo, is avoided? It, it's important. And also, how do we take this notion of the minerals belonging to the people seriously and how we think about its exploitation? This lagoon for the people of Ada is life. And with the tension here now, everyone is on the edge. The people of Ada are at the crossroads now. They are haunted by a bloody past. And because of that, what should otherwise be a transforming investment is being looked at with a lot of suspicion. The poverty and deprivation here continues to worsen. The roads are terrible. There are communities with no water, no schools, or even toilet facilities, while they sit by this multi-million dollar resource. But people also say everything that has happened here is a result of government's negligence, corruption in the past, and the way it has shared its duties. Electrochem now has the concession, despite all the protests. But the company has to work harder to win hearts and minds, and to ensure that the host communities around the Songo can still have a stake in the exploitation of the resource. This way, the chiefs and people and the government and Electrochem would all work together to achieve the peaceful and sustainable management of the salt deposits of a dam.